Welcome. I'm Jeff Zwerink, and I'm glad to have you here today. And I'm joined by my colleague and good friend Ken Wolgamuth, who's a geologist, has been working in the field of petroleum geology for over three decades, and is the founder of Solid Rock Lectures. And we're going to be talking about how far back can you count tree rings. Ken, it's good to have you here today. Thank you very much. It's I'm pleased to be here. Well, Finally, my first visit, long visit to Reasons to Believe. Well, good. It's good to have you here. And not, you know. There's been just kind of a long-running controversy in the church or discussion argument about how old things are. And uh, one of the ways the, to address this issue is by looking, figuring out how can we measure how old the earth is. And one of them is to look at tree rings. So kind of give us a brief intro. How do you actually count tree rings or why can we count tree rings to get an age? Well, as a tree grows, there's a growth right underneath the bark mm -hmm. that's brand new each year. And the residue behind that's left behind that's inside the tree are a successive series of tree rings that go back to when the tree was first started growing. And in fact, some of our museums around the country have these huge, like 10 to 12 foot diameter cross sections of tree rings. And they have 1,600, 1,500, 1,400, going back hundreds mm -hmm. of years. And then they have events that happen in each of those successive times. So, so that's one way of... That's the easiest way there is of telling the passage of time. So presumably there's something about the growth that each year there's something that puts a marker that it's actually a year. What exactly is that? Well, in the spring and summertime, the band of the width of the band of a ring may be rather wide if it's mm -hmm. a wet season or it's fairly narrow for a dry season. And in the wintertime when the tree is dormant, then it leaves a sort of a dark band. So okay. it's easy to see and count count the uh, annual layering, right, annual okay. rings on the trees. Okay, yeah, so I've seen tree rings and I've done enough study to know that there are trees that are kind of on the order of four or 5,000 years old. So is that the limit to how far back we can count tree rings? Well, I'll give you first an example of what is considered the oldest tree in the United States and it's actually given the name the Methuselah tree <laughs> after the biblical character Methuselah right. who was the oldest. And these are bristlecone pine trees. Mm -hmm. They're in the White Mountains of California in Inyo National Forest. And the Methuselah tree is back, goes back to about 4,800 years. It's so almost it, 5,000 years. It is an old one. That's impressive. So, so, I mean, does that mean that all we can do is count back 5,000 years with tree rings? Well, no, we have the opportunity to go further than that for the following reason. When we find a living tree and some dead trees in the same area, the dead trees would have started growing earlier, mm -hmm. and we can compare the width of the wet and dry seasons of the dead tree to match a segment of the living tree. And with a match, sort of like a barcode, we can then extend from a living tree to a dead tree and successively back in time. So presumably the, the signature, the widths of those things, because they're in the similar environment, they're going to be pretty unique and you can line them up well. It's not going to be something that there's lots of different ways to line them up, correct? That is correct. And we can do a confirmation in looking at the width of the bands and successive and match them up with high confidence. We have ways to do that. Okay, so as you begin to match up trees, how far back does the record extend where, or extend where you can count the rings? Okay, for California area that has those trees, the record uninterrupted goes back to about 8,000 years. That's and pretty impressive. Has, so. Yeah, and it has to do with the capacity to be able to match the bands that it's uninterrupted and it can be continuous. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, laboratories in Europe, in Germany in particular, have used uh, the... German oak tree, and in that case, they've dug up thousands and thousands of tree trunks from the mud of rivers in Europe, mm -hmm. and they've been able to extend that record the whole way back to 14,000 years as an uninterrupted sequence that goes back in time. You know, that's, that's a remarkable statement that I think bears repeating, is that by a process that we can see operating today that is very straightforward, we can actually count back 14,000 years. Yes. <laughs> so, so what are the implications of that? Okay. Well, let me give a bit of a description of the degree to which we have confirmation mm -hmm. that it is continuous. We have the confirmation that it's continuous because of radiocarbon. Okay. Radiocarbon is a 
type of carbon that's produced in the atmosphere and it's taken into the leaves of the mm -hmm. trees during photosynthesis. And so radiocarbon becomes part of each individual ring. Right. Once the tree has begun to age, successive tree rings back in time show the radioactive decay of that radiocarbon. Mm -hmm. so, so you we, could date, the, the earlier rings should date with less radiocarbon in it, correct? That's correct. The, the fresh growth of trees today will be at say 100% of radiocarbon mm -hmm. compared to the atmosphere. And then successively back in time, it decreases, decreases away with the characteristic half-life of radiocarbon. Mm -hmm. And so presumably the radiocarbon date and the counting you would get by assuming those are years, those both line up. Uh, that's correct. Or to put it, uh, we're not, we don't need to actually measure a radiocarbon age. We're just measuring the content mm -hmm. of the radiocarbon. And it is declining with the guided by or controlled by the radioactive half-life of radiocarbon, which is 5,730 years. So, so we've got very good confidence that we've got this set of tree rings that we can count back and actually show that there were trees growing 14,000 years ago. That is correct. And that's the type of data that the radiocarbon community then uses to get a radiocarbon age of something that goes back to that window of time. And the basic data is measuring the radiocarbon and then counting the tree rings to find out at what point does this unknown sample have a value that's the same as the tree rings of that count rate. 